You're listening to an audio article by the Common Constitution. Today's article is entitled Global Warming Science. It's settled. They lied again. How many times would you put up with being cheated on in a relationship? How many times would you tolerate being lied to? Is it one and done, or maybe two, three, a half a dozen? Obviously, this is a loaded question. It would depend on a number of factors. Independence versus interdependence, or maybe just how forgiving a person is. Maybe it's a relationship of convenience, like the Clintons, more a business partnership than a personal, loving relationship. But what if the relationship were between you and a cause? A cause you felt so strongly for, people considered you wedded to it. A cause like, oh, I don't know, global warming. What if you were all in on man-caused global warming because, as experts have oft repeated, the science of global warming is settled. But then you found out that the cause you've been wedded to is almost entirely a lie. What would you do? you may just have to reevaluate your loyalty. Last week, the Daily Caller posted an article calling into question, quote, nearly all of the warming and climate data, unquote. The article centers on a recent peer-reviewed study by two climate scientists and a veteran statistician. The study was reviewed and validated by seven respected PhDs from the fields of meteorology, climatology, data analysis, and atmospheric science. The scientists were attempting to validate the warming represented by global average surface temperature data sets managed by NASA, NOAA, and the UK's Met Office. What they discovered was just the opposite. Now, we skeptics, or dare I say deniers, have always contended that relying on surface temperature readings rather than more accurate and widely available satellite data would invariably lead to incorrect conclusions, either mistakenly or worse, purposefully. In other words, garbage in, garbage out. But fear not. The experts that manage these surface temperature data sets are not concerned. Being that they are experts, they are skilled at making adjustments to the raw data, quote, to account for biases in the data, unquote. However, the study shows that data set managers at NASA, NOAA, and the Met Office have been doing much more than just tweaking the data. Meteorologist Joe DeLeo, a study co-author, has proven that, quote, nearly all of the warming that they are now showing is in the adjustments, unquote. The study further reveals that these highly respected and infallible government scientists, of which we are never allowed to question, ever, have adjusted the raw data to, quote, cool past temperatures and warm more current records, increasing the warming trend, unquote. And as it turns out, these departments haven't been just adjusting data. They've been able to show steeper warming trends as of late. We've all seen and heard the dire warnings that this year is the hottest, which eclipsed last year, which was the hottest, etc. These experts have duped the public and governments alike by, quote, systematically removing previously existing cyclical temperature patterns, unquote. In other words, they've literally scrubbed previous historical warming periods. And the study's authors have gone a step further. Not only have they exposed data manipulation by the probe warming nuts dressed up as government experts, but they now claim that, quote, the science underpinning the EPA's authority to regulate greenhouse gases is invalidated, unquote. So much so that the EPA's evidence for controlling greenhouse gases, quote, simply does not exist in the real world, unquote. We deniers have insisted for years that man-caused warming is a scam and have trotted out reams of proof of cheating, lying, and manipulation. With the inclusion of this latest study, perhaps it's time Trump started handing out pink slips at NASA and NOAA like he has at the VA. Better yet, prosecute these experts for fraud. Thank you for listening.